Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a success story you'd like to share, how nutrition or nutritional supplementation has helped you or your loved ones, if you've read something, heard something you want clarification on, questions about ingredients or formulations, we want to hear from you. If you just want to contribute to the conversation, likewise, we'd love to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please go to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team or purchase Longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866 735 2470-866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, make some money, work out of your home, right off your right off your home office or right off part of your rent, right off part of your mortgage. You can write off your mileage, your stamps, and of course you can help change the world by really just by spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You don't need to do much more than that. Products take care of themselves. The concepts take care of themselves. The concept of nutritional supplementation is tried and true, period, end of story. The concept of using, the idea of using, the strategy of using nutritional supplements to get better is a tried and true strategy. If you've been on a supplement program and if you haven't gotten better, you haven't done it right. You haven't done it correctly. And that's understandable because it is somewhat confusing. That's why I'm here on this program and that's why Doc Wallach came up with the longevity line to simplify supplementation. The fact, that, uh, the fact that supplementation works to make your body healthier and stronger and better is incontrovertible. It doesn't mean you're going to take a supplement and automatically your disease state will disappear. But you will be healthier if you do it correctly, period. It's just how the body works. Anyway, if you want to join the Longevity team and join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we have been talking about the pineal gland, the master gland, the third eye, and this mysterious gland in the middle of the head. It's a third eye, literally. It senses sunlight. It's an eye in the middle of your head. It's an eye inside your brain where it is very, very dark except somehow electrical energy gets in through the eyes and hits the pineal gland and via this electrical energy and I'm not exactly sure how it all happens to tell you the truth I don't know anybody is but it's pretty darn amazing the light comes in through your eyes it gets converted the light energy gets converted into chemical energy back into electrical energy it hits the pineal gland the pineal gland senses that energy somehow in pharmacy school we used to say OGK when when uh, a phenomena like this were described to us, the professor would always go, OGK, only God knows, and that's pretty much it. Only God knows how this happens. 
So it hits the pineal gland. The pineal gland then modifies biochemistry, specifically around growth, repair, and immunity. Growth, repair, and anti-aging, and immunity, and healing. The pineal gland senses the sun in its position in the sky somehow, and its duration, how long it's in the sky, and turns that information into biochemistry, the biochemistry of building, growth, repair, healing, stress control, what I call life management. Life management chemistry is controlled by the sun via the pineal gland. And because of this role that the pineal gland plays in building and growth, repair, it makes perfect sense that the body's most important building, growth, repair, anti-aging, stress management, life management molecule would be involved. And guess what that molecule is? Your body's best biochemical friend, the molecule of building, the molecule of growth, the molecule of movement, the molecule of thinking, the molecule of repair, the molecule of healing. You think this stuff's important? We obviously, if you've been listening to this program, you know what I'm talking about. It's cholesterol. Cholesterol is your major life management chemical. And it's so important to understand this. It's your body's biochemical best friend. Cholesterol is multifunctional growth, repair, healing, and vitality, and movement, and action, and dynamism molecule. Our most important life management molecule, biochemical. You know, and I... I'm trying to impart the, the, the real potency and the, the importance and the relevance of this molecule uh, as a chemist to non-chemists. I want you to see, not as, don't think of cholesterol as a chemical. Think of it as your friend, as your biochemical best buddy. It's here to help. It's here to build. It's here to grow and repair. I'm, I'm coming at it from a chemistry standpoint because when I see the biochemistry of it, I'm thinking, oh, my God, vitamin D and cortisol, estrogen, and testosterone, and, and, and cell membranes and, and brain health and neurological health. Forget that. Just know it's your body's biochemical best friend. And we have allowed this biochemical best friend to become maligned and demonized by bad science and pharmaceutical company bottom lines. That's really what it's about. It's about the billions and billions and billions of dollars in profits that are to be made via this absolute lunacy, cholesterol, low, taking statin drug, lower your cholesterol hypothesis. This biochemical boneheadedness that surrounds the idea of good and bad cholesterol. There's no good and bad cholesterol, okay? No such thing. Doesn't exist. It's a mark. It can't, that, those phrases came out of the marketing department at Pfizer, I'm not kidding. Literally. Those are marketing terms. Just like uh, another good one that came out of the marketing department ter uh, marketing departments. This one from Lily. Uh, chemical imbalance in the brain. You have a chemical imbalance in the brain. The good cholesterol, high cholesterol, chemical imbalances in the brain. These are marketing terms. These are not scientific terms. But because marketing has become crossed over with science through advertising and public relations and the press and the media, we combine the two. We think we confuse marketing for science. So there's no good cholesterol. There's no bad cholesterol in any medical. We can be forgiven as lay people, okay, if we use the term as lay people. But if a medical professional uses those terms and really believes those terms, if you use them for education purposes, okay, I don't even know why you would. But if you do, that's one thing. But to actually believe in good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, if you're a medical professional, you need to start, you need to go back to biochemistry 101. No such thing. They don't exist. And even LDL and HDL, that's what the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol is, right? You got the, the good cholesterol is the HDL and the bad cholesterol is the LDL. I love the way it has good... It makes it sound like it's Star Wars or something. It makes it sound like they create this, they create this mythology around good and bad and, and evil and dark and light. And the, good, the, the drug companies come and they'll raise the good and they'll slay the bad. That's kind of, a, this, this is kind of this myth, mythologic, mythologicalization of health. And who, whose interest does it serve? It serves people selling us the stuff that's supposed to kill the bad guys and raise the good guys. The drug companies, the doctors, the medical model. LDL, by the way, and HDL are lipoprotein. High density lipoprotein is HDL. Low density lipoprotein is LDL. Do you hear the word cholesterol in there anywhere? No. They're not cholesterol. They're lipoprotein. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We'll take a commercial break and come back right after this. Okay, we're back 
on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we'll get your calls in our next segment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com or retinol, Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with 5% retinol, the most retinol, you're, the highest concentration of retinol you're going to find over the counter. Equipotent, this has the same potency, equivalent potency to Retin-A, tre, uh, Tretinoin, Retinoic Acid 0.05%, which in my opinion is incredibly valuable as an anti-aging topical product. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel is designed to have the same potency along, along with a big dose of vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth treatment products. If you're dealing with accelerated aging or want to prevent accelerated aging of the skin, if you have actinic keratoses, retinoic acid is one of the best topical and uh, at, not only uh, actinic keratosis, or AK, which is kind of like flaky, raised, raised bumps on the top of your head or if you're shaved or, or on your skin if you're out in the sun. Um, not only for AK or actinic keratosis, but, you know, retinol is actually protective against skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma in particular. I was just reading an article, we'll read this in our next segment, about 5-FU for squamous cell carcinoma. Well, it turns out retinol is non-toxic, not a drug and is also very effective against SCC, squamous cell carcinoma, a type of skin cancer. Okay, so we're talking cholesterol, your body's biochemical best friend. In my opinion, statin drugs and the statinization of society is the same as tantamount to population control. Now, I'm not saying that it's intentionally population control. I'm not going all conspiracy theory here. I'm not saying it's not. I don't know. Could, could be. The point is, it's e the equivalent of it, whether it's intentional or not. Cholesterol is important for fertility. It's important for the stabilization, for, for a producing a healthy egg cells and healthy skin cell, uh, healthy uh, sperm cells, and also for creating a healthy baby, a healthy fetus. Cholesterol is your body's best biochemical best. Is your biochem your body's biochemical best friend? It's tied into the light. It's tied into the pineal gland. Stand drugs are like fluoride in the water. They're population control in effect, if not intentional. And because the pineal gland is also important for anabolism, for building, for growth, and for repair, there's a link between the cholesterol and, between cholesterol and the pineal gland, and it's very likely that hypercholesterolemia, too much cholesterol in the blood, has something to do with 24-hour lighting and the pineal gland. The fact that our melatonin and serotonin are thrown off. Melatonin and serotonin are your two primary pineal gland hormones, and they affect everything else. And there's a very important connection between melatonin and cholesterol, and melatonin and cholesterol producing drugs, and also for that matter, serotonin. Healthy pineal gland functioning, having a healthy pineal gland will allow the body to use cholesterol appropriately so it doesn't have to be produced in such abundance. And it's been shown that pineal extracts, pineal gland extracts given to rats can lower cholesterol levels. And it's also been shown that when the pineal gland is removed, cholesterol levels go up. So clearly, we have a connection between cholesterol and pineal functioning. They take the pineal gland out, your pineal gland is removed, and your cholesterol goes up. Well, we don't have our pineal glands removed, but we have them calcified. We got them fluoridated. And in this fashion, it could very well be that fluoridation of the water causes your cholesterol to go up. You guys see how the logic here? Pineal glands, when pineal, the pineal gland is removed, cholesterol levels go up. Likewise, you can assume, you could presume that when the pineal gland is calcified or fluoridated or otherwise broken down or not working or somehow deteriorating, as it is when it's calcified, cholesterol levels will go up. So fluoride makes your cholesterol go up. And then you need a statin drug to take care of the fluoride that they put in the water. This is the brain-dead nature of how we take care of the body in our ridiculous pharmacomedicalized culture of ours. 
So the pineal gland plays a very important role in lowering cholesterol. Keep your pineal gland functioning appropriately. Make sure you get some sun. Stay away from fluoride. Use bentonite clay and chelating agents to keep the calcium out of your pineal gland. And understand melatonin. Melatonin is the major pineal gland hormone. Yes, serotonin is also important, but melatonin is probably, I don't want to say the most important because there's so many things that are the most important, but it's pretty darn important. Not, that doesn't necessarily mean that supplementing with melatonin is something you want to do. That's a tricky one. Supplementing with melatonin is a tricky one. I personally do take melatonin, but you got to be careful. As you get older, you make less melatonin, but if you start supplementing with melatonin on a regular basis, your body will make even less melatonin. So you got to be careful with the melatonin supplements, in my opinion. It's a hormone. It's not nutrition. It's not like the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. You don't have to worry about the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients with the exception of some of the minerals. Melatonin is a hormone, like DHEA, same thing with, and pregnenolone. These are hormones, so you got to kind of play a little bit more carefully with them. But it's been shown that melatonin can help lower blood cholesterol. In fact, you can think of melatonin as a natural statin drug. I'm, again, I'm not saying melatonin as a supplement to lower your cholesterol, but it has that kind of effect. Now, if you're getting older, you may want to consider you're having problems sleeping. Melatonin also antagonizes cortisol. It blocks cortisol. So you may want to use melatonin uh, to help you sleep. So a lot of times as we get older, our, our cortisol levels go up. We're going to talk about cortisol here in a few days. Our cortisol levels go up simply with aging, simply as the body accumulates toxicity and as, the, as a deterioration increases and as blood sugar starts to become, as our ability to control blood sugar starts to become compromised, which happens to pretty much everybody as they age, taking a little bit of melatonin may be helpful. Melatonin can help you sleep. Melatonin can help you lower your cholesterol. Melatonin can protect cholesterol from oxidation. Uh, melatonin can protect uh, other fats from oxidation. This is an article from the uh, from uh, the journal Pineal Research, April 2004, quote, melatonin reduces cholesterol accumulation and pro-oxidant state, that means oxidation, induced by high cholesterol in plasma liver and probably the aorta. That is the, the blood vessels that feed the heart. So melatonin, taking melatonin may help you with your heart disease via this, this uh, cholesterol protection Mechanism. Keep in mind now, I'm not saying cholesterol is a problem here. Cholesterol is not a problematic substance. It's the excessive secretion following sugar, following ex excessive ingestion of sugar, blood sugar problems, insulin, uh, not getting enough sun. That's where you run into the problem. How do you like that? Not getting enough sun can actually cause your cholesterol to go up. And they still want more just another example of biochemical ignorance of just how our medical model does not understand how the body works at the biochemical level so i always say if you want to get healthy if you want to understand your body find a biochemist you don't need a doctor you need a biochemist somebody who understands the pathways how everything is connected in the body at the chemical level okay we are going to take a commercial break 844-236-6010 is our number and we do have lines open for you if you're on hold hang on we'll get you when you come back I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will return with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about uh, cholesterol, if you're on a statin drug, you want to wean yourself off your, your statin drugs or questions about this whole cholesterol hypothesis of heart disease, fluoridation, hypothyroidism, anything we've been, we've been speaking about here today, anything really in the world of health and nutrition, we want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition, including skin health, which is my particular uh, field of expertise. I got into, I got into, well, I got into the skincare business when I saw how powerful nutrition, both topical and nutrition and, and internal nutrition could be for taking care of the skin. And I've been dedicating my life to formulating topical nutritional products for the skin for going on 30 years, for over 30 years, for nearly 35 years. I discovered that you use nutrients on top of the skin. You could use nutrients on top of the skin the way you take them internally and get benefits. Now, you, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just throw 
multiple vitamins on your skin and expect to get better, you got to know how to formulate a little bit. But the most important thing you can put on your skin are topical nutrients, especially topical A and topical C. Vitamin A and vitamin C. Those are your go-to active ingredients for topical skin care. And that's why I created my Truth Treatments, which you can find out all about at truthtreatments.com. They're packed with vitamin A and vitamin C. They're not, they're, they're, there's no foo-foo window dressing. It's the real deal. And that's why people get such great results. And that's why I don't advertise. And, you know, people, word of mouth is the best way to advertise. Word of mouth is always the best way to advertise because then you know that you're dealing with something that people are getting benefits from. It's not me saying it. It's people using the product saying it. And that's why I'm, that's why true treatments are out there. So you guys can get the benefit of topical nutrition for anti-aging, for keeping your skin looking beautiful, noticeably beautiful. Ask anyone who's been using these products. Your skin will be noticeably beautiful. People will comment on your skin. What are you doing to your skin? That's the most, uh, to me, that's the way you can tell that a product works. That's the best way to tell the effectiveness of a topical product. Does your skin glow? Does it radiate? Is it healthy looking? Not even the wrinkles, not even the fine lines. Is it healthy looking? Does it have a radiance to it? That's what healthy skin, that's what beautiful skin is about. Beautiful skin is healthy skin. Healthy skin is radiant, glowing skin. And you get that by using topical nutrients as well as, of course, internal strategies. But topical, topically, vitamin A and vitamin C, high doses, fat soluble. You'll find them in all our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple stories here, and then we'll get to you. Uh, we'll get you the phone. Uh, we'll get to your phone calls. Actually, I want to read this first. This is from my friend Peter in the UK. I hope you're listening, Peter. Peter's... Uh, has set up our archive page, benfuchsarchives.com, which has a search engine on it. If you miss a program, it's also a compilation of all my other websites. I've got six different blogs and websites, et cetera, and they're all up at Ben Fuchs Archives. I think it's plural. I hope it's plural. It says here archive, actually. Hmm. Well, maybe it's both. Ben Fuchs Archive or benfuchsarchives.com. Uh, anyway, Peter asks, can you speak about the subject of burping specifically? When is burping a necessary digestive symptom? When is burping a sign of digestive issue or problem? And how can we tell the difference? Kind of regards, Peter. So here's the deal. Gas, we're gaseous beings. And when we digest food and we break food down, gas is going to be emitted. So your flatulence and bloating and burping, these are just natural parts of the digestive process. When we eat, we also ingest air in the eating process and when you ingest too much air that air can come back up that's called a belch or a burp not a big deal it's not the end of the world if it's uncomfortable if it's painful if it interferes with your life somehow then eat slower you'll have less air coming into your stomach and you'll have less burping or use more liquidy foods use more smoothies use more veggie juices which is always a good idea anyway it's always a good idea to get as many calories as you can in liquid form now, you do need the fiber, and that's why vegetable juices are important, because you can get the best of both worlds if you use a Vitamix. You'll get the fiber, and you'll be liquefying your veggies. So that can help you if you're burping. You can also change what you eat. That can help you, too. Some foods require more chewing, for example, so you probably get more air. So just kind of play around. And that's only if it's uncomfortable. If it's not uncomfortable, don't even worry about it. Now, if it is associated in, in um, biology, they say comorbid. Comorbid means an associated health condition a comorbid condition, C-O-M-O-R-B-I-D, comorbidities are associated uh, medical issues, and they're always important to know. That's when I always talk about this, the, you got to co collect the dots before you can connect the dots. Collecting the dots means looking for comorbidities, other conditions, other health issues. So if you have, uh, if you have chronic belching and you also have an immune problem, an autoimmune disease, say, or uh, something like arthritis, an inflammatory condition, brain fog, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, or if you have skin issues, or if you have uh, uh, rosacea, psoriasis, or if you have other digestive issues, now you may have a problem. Now the belching is one of the dots. And then you got to start to collect the dots. You got to have more dots. Nobody just has one dot. If you just have one dot, you're belching and you're 100% fine, no biggie. But if you start to have dots, now you have an issue. You may have a bacterial problem called H. pylori. H. pylori is a particularly interesting organism that lives inside the body. It's not a bad guy. You, you may have heard if you study health and nutrition that H. pylori is a bad guy. It's not a bad guy. Like cholesterol is not a bad chemical. H. pylori is a very functional microorganism when it's in the right place. 
when it's thrown all over the body and, and reproducing in excessive amounts, it can be a problem, especially in the digestive tract and especially for the skin. Rosacea is a classic manifestation of an H. pylori infection. Rosacea is not a skin condition. Rosacea is a blood condition. Rosacea is an inflammatory immune condition, not a skin problem. If you're out there using a rosacea cream, you're wasting your money. And if it's a steroid cream, you may suppress your immunity a little bit, and maybe get some benefit, but you're still wasting your money because you still have your rosacea. And without your inflammatory cream, your rosacea is coming back. The trick to dealing with rosacea is to yeah, figure out why H. pylori is, why, why you have a problem with H. pylori, and, and guess what? You're going to almost always find it has to do with the probiotics or the microbiome or the good bacteria that live in the intestine. All right, so that's burping. No, no biggie if it's, not a, if it's not associated with other health challenges. It, is a, it can be a biggie if, it's comor if there are comorbid conditions, in which case you want to use probiotics, lay off a of fluoridated water, Stay away from any antibiotic-rich laden uh, foods and uh, probably boost, and, uh, boost your immune system too using vitamin C and zinc and selenium and all the other immune-boosting nutrients we talk about. And laying off of sugar. Sugar can really wreak havoc on the microbiome. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. So let's say good morning to Elaine in Alaska, our friend Elaine. Hey there, Elaine. Happy New Year. Hi, Happy New Year. What's going on? How are you doing today? Good. I still get butterflies when I call in. So. <laughs> are you nervous? I can't believe it's it. It's probably just me and you. T I think it's just me and you today. I don't think anybody's <laughs> listening. Hey, um, just uh, I've got two questions. Um, okay. I don't know if you have heard of, he, he's from Iceland. His name is Wim Hof. Is he the guy who stays in the freezing conditions, like without his, right. just in his underwear? Got, he sits on ice blocks in his underwear or something like that? I, I, he, is that who you're talking about? I, yeah, he's got all... I, uh, I have heard of, of him. Yeah, what's oh. his name? Tell me his name again. Wim Hof, in which, that's spelled W-I-M, as in... Okay. Yeah? H-O-F-F? -F? H-O-F, as in Frank. Yeah, I, I think I've seen him talking about how he uses mind over matter to, like, withstand the cold. I think that's the guy I, we're talking about. Yeah? Ha hang on a second. I want to continue, okay? So don't go away, Elaine. All right? We've got to take a commercial break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, please go to bright, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase the longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off both all three websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. Hey, Elaine. Hi. So Winhoff, yes, I have heard of him. Um, I'm not. Is that was that your question for me, or did you want to talk well, about that? Well, I just wanted to make a comment that my uh, doctor, because I have to see her annually for the lupus, just to make sure things are going well. And it was her that suggested oh. some of the breathing techniques. Yeah. From nice. He's also a big mind over matter guy too. Winhoff. Right. You know, the yeah. controlling your biology using your mind. What do you think of that idea? We can control our biology using our mind. That implies that we can discontrol our body by inelegant use of the mind, doesn't it? If, if we can, sure. right? Oh, if you yeah. can lower your blood pressure mentally, you probably can raise your blood pressure mentally too. I would say, you know, that's, that may be the missing link when it, that, no, that is the missing link when it comes to how we heal the body in addition to nutrition, of course, and, uh, um, and you know, the physical things that we have to do, the mental and emotional strategies, in my opinion, and the spiritual strategies are the missing link when it comes to getting healthy. So is that your question, or did you have something specific for us, Elaine? Yeah, I have a, a question. I need some help for yeah. a, a friend of mine. She's a hairdresser and a single mom, and okay. her daughter last summer uh, had some very severe she had uh, two seizures. The second one was much worse. Um, I don't exactly know what's going on. Um, so they said something was wrong with her corpus callosum. Well, that's uh, just mumbo jumbo. She's got an electrical problem in the brain. Yeah. That's basically it. So here's a couple things. First of all, change, she's got to change the way she eats. She, well, uh, let me, let me okay, finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. After the seizure, 
then her nine-year-old daughter um, started developing severe psoriasis. Well, um, same, so I, probably, they're probably all the same idea. It's the same yeah. thing. Psoriasis is seizures of the skin. The skin uh, seizures are psoriasis of the brain. Same thing. So it's disruptions in the flow of energy through the cells, period. Elect, because the brain's electrical, it involves the electricity. Because the skin cells divide so rapidly and the immune system is located in the skin, the psoriasis is about immunity. But either way, work with food. See if you can notice that there's a relationship between breakouts or seizures in specific foods and modify the diet accordingly. The ketogenic diet is invaluable for seizures. It can also help psoriasis patients. Make sure she's using fatty vitamins, both the psoriasis patient and the psoriasis little girl and the, 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 the kid with the seizures. Fatty vitamins especially. The brain is a fatty system. So is the skin. Vitamins A and D and E and K. Glycine is an amino acid that can be particularly helpful for folks dealing with seizure disorders. Likewise, GABA, G-A-B-A. Um, maybe, how old's the kid with the seizures? I, I, would, I would lay off of the hormones, like I was going to say melatonin or pregnenolone, but I would lay off of that. Have her on a sugar as best as you can, uh, sugar metabolizing and low sugar diet. Um, and that includes bread and pasta and gluten. If there's any digestive issues, you've got to work there for both patients. Seizure, seizures are psoriasis of the brain. Psoriasis is seizures of the skin. Same bodily breakdown from a cellular perspective. And that's the key here. From a cell perspective, it's all the same thing. Starvation, suffocation, toxification of the cell. Work with the toxicity element through the digestive system. Work with the, uh, the starvation element through good food and nutritional supplementation, as I just mentioned, all the supplements we just talked about. And that's no, by no means comprehensive. Don't forget essential fats, by the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, um, and then make sure you're working on the oxygen component, and that means SDR breathing, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, calming the body down. Both psoriasis and seizure disorders are a sign of a hyperactive system, a system where the energy is not being controlled, the electrical energy in the case of the brain, the, the, the growth energy in the case of the cells, uh, of the skin, are, is not being controlled. So the body needs to be calmed down. In the case of um, um, both the uh, seizure disorders and psoriasis, SDR breathing, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. All right, I want to get one more call in, Elaine. Anything else you want to throw in or add? That's great. Thank you. Write your book. Yeah, thank you so much, Elaine. Have a great day. Okay, let's move on to Georgia and talk to Don. Good morning, Don. Hey, how you doing, Dan? Doing good. What's going on? Really quick, um, could you talk a bit about adrenal fatigue? Yes. And how do you know if you if you have it? And the reason I ask oh, is, oh, you'll no know. How well, I sleep at night. You'll you know, know you have it. And, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, that, how would I know? Well, here's how you know: you feel like crap, but you're still jittery, and you can cycle from feeling like crap to being jittery, back to feeling like crap to feeling jittery, or they can happen together. But both, basically, it's when you're just fatigued. You don't feel like doing anything. You're lethargic. You're weak. You have brain fog issues, and simultaneously, you can't sleep. And you're jittery. Does that sound familiar? Well, not for me, but what okay. I'm dealing with is I sleep well. Oh, you do and sleep well. I wake up. I sleep well, and I wake up, and then maybe an hour or two after I'm awake, whether I eat or not, I get sleepy again. Okay, no, that's 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 a sign that you're going low blood sugar in the middle of the night. So and that's very common. Mm. So what happens is okay. is our body's working in the middle of the night. It's using sugar. It's burning through sugar. And uh, it's releasing sugar, especially if you're under some kind of duress or you're healing from something. Your body will release sugar into the blood in the, throughout the night. If the sugar levels get too high, it'll trigger an insulin response and your blood sugar will drop. And then you'll wake up. Because when the blood sugar drops, that's an emergency. And that's not uncommon at all. What I would be doing is I'd be using a little bit of protein before you go to bed. You might want to try... Mm. You might want to try some essential fats before you go to bed, EFAs before you go to bed. You might want to try a mm -hmm. little magnesium before you go to bed. Uh, something that will keep your blood sugar stable. Or you might want to try something called BCAAs. You can get those as capsules or tablets. Branch chain. There you branch go. Chain branch chain acids. amino acids. Okay. That's exactly right. Branch chain amino acids. You also might want to... What about a, what about a protein powder with I was going to say, I, that's exactly what I was going to say. You also might want to try the Keto FX or the Slender FX or whey protein or, or an egg. 
all of which are really okay. rich rich sources of the BCAAs. Do maybe crack a soft boiled egg or even do a raw egg for that matter before you go to bed. Okay. Uh, you don't want to have too much food in your system before you go to bed. So if you are going to do protein, don't put a lot in there. You don't want your body digesting while it's sleeping, and you definitely don't want to be eating anything crappy before you go to bed. A lot of times when we wake up in the morning and we just you don't feel physically right, that's because the body has been dumping out toxins from the digestive system into the connective tissue while we're sleeping. And then you wake up, mm. and this is, especially if this is chronic. If you chronically wake up with uh, sore muscles or just uncomfortable physically, aside from a little bit of stretching, you know, that, that's normal because you have been sleeping. You, you have, your body's been immobile for eight hours. But if it's just you really can't get your mojo back physically, you may want to uh, see if you're eating too much before you go to bed. That can definitely cause that problem. So you don't want to eat too much is what I'm saying. But a little bit of protein, okay. a small egg, you know, like a teaspoon of protein powder kind of thing, or even half a teaspoon, or just straight BCAAs. Or a little chicken soup, too. That'll work, too. A little bit of chicken soup. Does that help? Okay. You want to, yeah, here, let me give you some adrenal awesome. nutrients real quick. A vitamin C, very mm -hmm. important adrenal nutrient. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day, very important adrenal nutrient. Magnesium and copper are also important, especially magnesium is also important for the adrenal glands. Iodine. Really, really important for the adrenal glands. Uh, you can also use uh, the whole, all the B complex, but particularly vitamin B12, very important for the adrenal glands. And you can also use something called adrenal extract, which is, as the name implies, it is extracted adrenal glands um, um, from either bovine or porcine from cows or pigs, if you're not a vegetarian or a vegan, obviously. And then also, no. last but not least, DHEA, although I'm a little bit, I would be a little careful with DHEA, but it is can be very helpful for the adrenal glands. Likewise, pregnenolone, uh, and, um, and if, you're, if you can get it, progesterone or progesterone cream. Okay? How's that? Anything okay. else you want to add Sounds there, Don? And, and the uh, iodine, is that, it, would, would a transdermal be good as well? Uh, no, not as good as the Lugol's okay. or the Iodorol. Hey, are you, are you, gotcha. how's, did you get that winter bomb thing that they're talking about in, in oh Georgia? God, it's freezing here. It's 22 degrees. That is not freezing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, for, yeah, for, yeah, no. And literally, I guess it is freezing. Okay, good. <laughs> 22 in Georgia. That is pretty crazy. 22 in Georgia. Did yeah, it snow? Yeah. Did it snow? No, no, no. We're expecting some, no. Are they expecting the it to North stay Mountains. for like a week or so? Did they say that? Um, yeah. It's, it's, when I looked at the 10-day uh, forecast, it was yeah. pretty... Uh, it's going to be yeah, steady, 22 degrees? Next, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, 22 is up into the 30s. And, All right, you know, okay. Highs of like 35 and stuff like that. You sound like you're from New York, though. So. Are you? I am. Yeah. Uh, so I this is tell. nothing from me. Okay. Good, <laughs> minus, oh, minus I was just talking to some of my friends in New York City. They they really got it bad up there. All right. I got to go, Don. Yeah. God bless you, my friend. Right. Good luck. Hope I helped you out. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and our truthtreatments.com for all our true skin health products, truth retinol 5% gel, truth transdermal sea balm, truth omega-6 healing cream, and the award-winning truth transdermal sea serum. Go to one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now. Thank you.